top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And it's been reported that English touring opera has dropped 14 white freelance musicians from performing in next year's season in a letter citing a commitment to increasing all kinds of diversity in its team. It's been claimed that almost half the orchestra lost their roles. The musicians work as freelancers, meaning they can be dropped from the opera season on season, but it's believed many have played with the company for up to 20 years and pretty much consider it a permanent job. So a letter sent to the freelancers said, it does seem likely that ETO will not be in a position to offer you a freelance engagement in the spring 2022 season, even if we would like to leave the door open for freelance engagements in the future. It added English Touring Opera is committed to increasing all kinds of diversity in its team. And while there have been appreciable steady advances on the stage in this area, we have prioritised increased diversity in the orchestra. This is in line with the firm guidance of the Arts Council principal founder of ETO's touring work and of most of the trust funds that support ETO. But the Arts Council actually responded with its own statement, saying Arts Council England did not instruct English Touring Opera to send this letter. We were not aware of the letter until after it had been sent. We take matters of concern very seriously and are now in conversation with English Touring Opera to establish the facts and to determine whether any terms of condition of the funding agreement have been breached. Now, you could argue that the move is an example of so-called positive action, which under the Equality Act of 2010 allows the favouring of those with a protected characteristic such as race as long as they're qualified as qualified for the role. But Rod Liddell disagrees. In a new column for The Spectator tomorrow, he will argue that discrimination in any guise is still discrimination. And Rod Liddell joins me now. So, Rod, this is an astonishing situation. These, these 14, I believe they're white, 14 white musician axed in one fell swoop. What say you? Well, it's racism. <clears throat> it's the actual quintessence of racism. That is what racism means. You sack someone because, they're a, because of the colour of their skin rather than because they're useless at their job uh, or... or uh, uh, or they're incompetent. I mean, it, it, it is pure and untrammeled racism. But, but the bigger story, I think, mm. um, and, and we've got lots of these corporate institutions um, around the country, uh, mainly in the public sector, uh, all trying to show that they're holier than thou and virtue signalling on various woke issues. But there is a real um, culture war now going on about music. Yes. Uh, We've already seen the Royal Academy of Music uh, debating whether it should destroy some of its thousands of beautiful artefacts, uh, such as pianos and violins, because they're made with colonial ivory or ebony from, you know, 300 years ago, uh, and which was related to the slave trade uh, in an act of idiocy and vandalism. Um, but there's also an attack on whether classical composers are any good. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, Beethoven is under attack, uh, which is ironic because it's only a few years ago that uh, some left-wing campaigners were claiming that Beethoven was actually black. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, which isn't So, so why attack true. him? <laughs> but why attack him? But now they're saying, nah, he's, he's, been, uh, he's been supported by basically... Uh, uh, white supremacy for the last 200 years, and he was not much to write home about. Uh, uh, you know, probably on the same level as someone like Mike Batt or someone, I don't know. Uh, and more crucially as well, musical notation, i.e. the way we write music, is now being attacked as being at the centre of white supremacy. So we had Oxford University saying uh, that they were going to review the way uh, the, 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 the emphasis it put on musical notation uh, uh, in, in order to decolonize its, its own curriculum. And it's an absurdity. And what we're trying to do at the moment, and music is a good example of this, is tear down um, hundreds of years of brilliance, of enlightenment, of genius, uh, in order to kowtow to a spurious and entirely stupid political correctness now. 
Well, indeed. And, 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 and Rod, there's a couple of angles I, I want to go at uh, this at. But, but yeah. can we just start yeah. with the ETO itself, right? Because if these 14 musicians who, as you say, by all accounts and as far as we know, were all doing a great job, all incredibly talented, this wasn't about their performance at all as far as we're aware... But they have no rights, do they? Because under the Equality Act of 2010, uh, organisations can favour those with a so-called protected characteristic. So if they're being replaced by people who are potentially ethnically diverse, for example, it means they have no rights. No, that's exactly right. Uh, and, And the Act is, of course, mistaken. And it causes divisiveness, rancor and bitterness yeah. amongst amongst people. And, and you know, if, if I were a, a black violinist who had just been taken on by the English Touring Opera, uh, I would be extremely worried that I'd been taken on, not because I was a brilliant violinist, but because of the colour of my skin. And that's the other <clears throat> terrible thing it does, is that it casts doubt upon the people who are taken on, who may come from ethnic minority backgrounds, um, and who who are not there because they're brilliant, but because they're black, which is an absurdity and condescending and vile. I mean, I remember when I was at the Today programme, editor of the Today programme, uh, we had a, a large number of ethnic minority reporters, producers, researchers, and so on on the programme. And, I, and we had to do audits, race audits all the time, which really annoyed me. And it, it annoyed them, and it annoyed me that there would be any suggestion that any of them would have been taken on because of the colour of their skin rather than because they were brilliant journalists. It is condescending, patronising, and it's wrong, purely wrong. And and, and do we have any idea why the Arts Council didn't seem to back this decision? Was this just the the ETO being uber-woke as a sort of renegade organisation or did they think there was some sort of pressure to diversify? I suspect they did think there was some sort of pressure to diversify. And I think also that stuff I was talking about earlier, which is that, which is that, is that all of our corporations, all of our third sector corporations, the public sector institutions are, are, uh, many of them are led by people who wish to prove their woke credentials by being um, uh, more virtuous than thou and more radical than thou in, in imposing fatuous and idiotic uh, and divisive and and unpleasant uh, regimens on the people who work for them. We've seen that at uh, the National Trust. We've seen it at various uh, Oxbridge colleges. Uh, and we're seeing it now throughout the, uh, the, the, the various institutions which preserve our musical heritage back to the you know, uh, 16th century. No, indeed. And, and, and then the other angle, Rod, which I found absolutely fascinating in, in, in your column, is obviously the history of, of music notation. And it's not actually something that does play into the hands of people who say uh, that, that, that somehow teaching it supports the themes of white supremacy. Because as you say, actually, the Chinese and the Japanese, for example, did have some form of uh, music notation dating back a thousand years or so, so to the Indians. And actually, the reason that there's not for African music is because actually so much of it was improvised. So there was just a different way that they, they did music in Africa. Yes, it's an absurdity. All of... Uh... Uh, all of African music was we, We've got nothing whatsoever from African music in terms of musical notation. Nil, zilch. Uh, the Indians were uh, notating music back in uh, 1000 BC, 1200 BC. Um, but, 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 the, but the crucial thing is, is that the reason that these campaigners hate musical notation is that in order to understand musical notation, you have to be intelligent. Uh, And you also have to acquire knowledge. And both of those things, i.e., you know, the notion of intelligence, the notion also of acquiring knowledge, uh, are not liked at all by the the left-wing campaigners. Uh, And we're seeing that, you know, not just within music, uh, but within physics and maths. And, of course, musical notation is actually a distillation of physics and maths. Uh, It's about about the way in which sound works. It's about uh, the mathematical... Uh, variations of the way in which different tones work. Um, and, and so this stuff is quite difficult to learn. You need to learn it. Uh, you need to understand it. 
uh, and you need a certain level of intelligence to do that. And that is altogether all too elitist for the people who wish to tear down 300, 400 years of learning.